بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قول أما بعد All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah and my brothers and my sisters I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His grace and mercy that He gathered us here tonight to make us from amongst those that He admits into the paradise under the banner of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, for the past few weeks I've been talking about the fitan and the word fitan is a plural word of fitna. And fitna means an affliction and it also has different or has different meanings to it. So the word fitna carries different meanings to it. And one of the meanings of fitna is seduction, enticing someone to do something wrong, tribulations, calamities. But the type of fitna that I want to talk about tonight is that fitna that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, it will come like a wave destroying everything in front of it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith that there will be or there will come a time where the one that's grabbing on his religion is like grabbing on a very hot burning coal. So there will come a time where people will struggle when it comes to their religion and practicing their religion. Not only that it will come a very difficult time that we will struggle to practice our religion, implement our religion. But what's more important than that and a step before that is the struggle of people understanding Islam. And that's the struggle that we see many of our youngsters these days. They struggle understanding Islam. And understanding Islam sometimes, sometimes can be difficult because they themselves put themselves in a situation where they make themselves confused because of the particular issues that we addressed last week. And that is where you find a lot of people go on the net and continue to ask too many different, different questions to too many different people, let, listen to different lectures. In particular, listen to sources that have got no idea who is the one behind that source. Or people even taking or seeking advice from behind someone that they've got no idea who this person is. They are seeking this advice from this person. They've got no idea who this person behind this username or behind this uh, address or this email address and so on. So it is confusing sometimes. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself, he says, that prompt yourself and take advantage and move yourself towards doing the right deeds and the righteous actions before where you'll experience and encounter fitna, which is a time and era where people will be so confused and people will struggle to implement and practice their religion. That the Prophet Muhammad describes those fitan, describes those affliction or those afflicting times as so dark, as dark as the night that you can't even see what's in there. And that also can add to the confusion that people will be experiencing, the confusion that people will encounter. So confusing, so dark that people don't even know which direction to go. People will be so confused what to take and what to reject, who to listen from and who to reject. And that's why in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa gives very important advices that we spoke about last week from amongst them as the Prophet Muhammad. He says in the hadith when he says, there will come a time, there will come a time where people will so confuse, people will don't even know who to resort to. And not only that, that you find that people will be sifted or filtered out because they betray their trust and people are not even upholding or fulfilling their trust. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam he says, and the best source of action, the best way to deal with that time of fitna is that you deal with matters that you know of and abstain away from matters that you don't know of. Look and seek matters that you know of. Take care of the matters that it's prominent amongst you and amongst your ummah and keep away from matters which are confusing to you. If there's something that's sus, something that's suspicious, something that it's unknown of, something that we don't need to know of, something that it's becoming confusing, something that you find that there is some sentiment towards it which is negative, keep away from it and go towards something that you know there is a positive sentiment towards. 
there is a positive sentiment towards it. There's a positive sentiment where people agree to it. People feel inclined towards it. And particular what the majority of the Ummah does. What the majority of the Muslims do. And another wasiya that I wanted to also talk about here tonight is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he speaks to Uqba ibn Amr and he is one of the companions that were around during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he himself asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what should I do during the time of affliction? What should I do during the time of fitna? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says to him Amsik alayka lisanak وَلْيَسَعْكَ بَيْتُكْ وَبْكِ عَلَى خطيئتك. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives this advice to Uqba and he says to him, hold on your tongue. In other words, grab on your tongue, which means don't say something loosely. Don't just say whatever you hear. Don't just say whatever you hear. Don't just say whatever you want to say. Because sometimes what adds to the confusion, what adds, what adds to the complication of the matters. What adds, what adds to the complicity of the matter is that people continue talking and they talk a lot of rubbish. And I'm sorry to say that, and I'll be upfront about it, in particular in our community. We talk so much rubbish and we talk about everyone and everything, even the things that we've got no idea what they are, we talk about them. And we attack this person and we attack that person, we attack this sheikh and we attack that sheikh and we attack this da'i and we attack this group and we attack that group and it's just an attack of this guy and attack on that guy and attack on this imam and an attack on that one as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Amsik alayka lisanak Hold and preserve your tongue Don't just go and talk foolishly and just talk like the rest of the talk, just because people are talking, you talk. Because people said so and so on this sheikh, that's it, we're going to talk everything about him. Some people, and this is a character in us, we talk about others even though we've never ever met them in our lives. So I start talking about Muhammad, and even though I've never met Muhammad, why? Because everyone else is talking about Muhammad. Or because my mates are talking about Muhammad. Or maybe because someone had a dispute or had an issue with Muhammad, that means I have to have an issue with him. That's a character that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warns of. He alayhi salatu wa sallam warns of just because everyone else is talking, it doesn't mean that you need to talk the talk that everyone else is talking about. Amsik alayka lisanak. Hold. Hold fast and grab your tongue. In other words, then talk while everyone else is talking. Verify what you hear before you speak it. And that's a major issue that we have in our community and a major issue that we have in our ummah that we all just talk what we hear without even verifying if what we've heard is right or correct or wrong or not. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he says, Wali asa'ka baytuk, stay at your house. Don't be part of the fitna. Just because people are trying to cause fitna doesn't mean you have to be part of it because they're your mates or your tribe or your cousins or your family. I don't have to engage myself to be part of something that's wrong. Stay at your house and then the Prophet ﷺ, he says, وأبكي وأبكي and cry, and that's even better for you, cry over your mistakes and your sins. Rather than you just focusing on other people's mistakes and downfalls, you look at your downfalls and you look at your own sins. So the first advice, which I believe that's the most important advice in the entire hadith, even though the entire hadith and all the advices in the hadith are very important and vital for us, especially as Muslims living at this time and living at this age. What the Prophet Muhammad wasallam wants you to begin with, when you are in a position or when you're in the state of confusion, or you, when you are encountering confusion, or you're encountering fitan, just keep quiet. Whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment, then let them say what's good or keep quiet. And that's the quality of the mu'min. He says what's good, what's beneficial, or otherwise, he keeps quiet. But what we have these days, nowadays, everyone wants to talk the talk, even if it's rubbish. Even if it's not verified. Even if it's incorrect. Even if it's evil. 
And what's the talk these days? We attack the imams, we attack the mashayikh, we attack the ulama, we attack the du'at. Rather than us standing by one another and being there for each other, we start attacking one another. And then we start saying, oh, look at the enemies of Islam attacking Islam. Well, we, well, you are contributing to the attack. You are contributing to the attack. You're not helping the situation. And this is what we see these days from religious people attacking other religious people. And this group attacking that group. And that group attacking this group. And this group saying that and claiming that we are on the truth and they are on falsehood. And the other group is saying that we are on the truth and the other group is on falsehood. Then listen to this sheikh. Listen to that sheikh. Then listen to that sheikh. Listen to this sheikh. And we just tag along with the talk that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Specifically he says during those days. Those days of affliction. Those days of fitan that we live in. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Amsik alayka lisana. Hold and grab your tongue. Don't let your tongue loose and just talk what everyone else talks. And you need and you must, and it's part of our religion to verify what we hear before we speak it. And before we speak it, and we before we even make any decisions or judgments. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Ida ja'akum. Oh ya ayu aladina amanun ja'akum fasukum binaba in fatabayanu. All those who believe, if you experience or you encounter any news or you hear something about someone, then verify before you make a decision. Verify before you even start speaking it. But us, before we even make a decision or before we even think about it, we start attacking and we start talking and we start going on with the flow. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu warns of that. What does it say? La takunu imma. Don't you ever become yes men and blind followers. Whatever people say, you say. Whatever people do, you do. And we are so entrenched and ingrained when it comes to this. We are so entrenched and ingrained when it comes just to follow what other people follow. And do what other people do. And we say what other people say. Rather than us thinking for ourselves and using that brain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us and this iman of Islam that's in our hearts and think for ourselves and say, you know what? Before I even make any judgment over what you just said, let me verify that. Let me even ask. Let me at least inquire. Let me at least look into it. But no, that's it. Two, three people say something about someone, that's it, we'll tag along with it. And what's happening these days? Few people that we don't even know who they are, what they are, they say, you know all these mashayikh, all these ulama, all these imams, they're all crooks. They're all scholars for dollars. They're all bunch of sellouts. And then people say, you know what, yeah, it's true. And this person has no idea what this person is saying. He doesn't even know this advice that's coming from who and what and what it is. And this person say, yes. That's exactly what you call the enemies of Islam want you to believe. For you to understate and for you to look down at your imams and your mashayikh and your ulama. For you to undermine them. Because when the ummah has no head, then the ummah has no goodness in it. If the head is chopped off, then there's no goodness in that body. Even if that body looks good and it's, a sh and, it's and it's a good figure and it's a good shape and so on. So my brothers and my sisters, what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu illustrates to us, Amsik alayka lisanak, during these days, or during these times, times of affliction, times of confusion, times of complexity, times when things are so complex and so confusing and so unsettled, and especially where you find sometimes even the ummah is so unorganized, it's in shambles, and Nabi Sallallahu says, Amsik alayka lisanak. Don't start attacking each other. Don't start attacking scholars. Don't start looking down at every single sheikh that you dislike or you disagree with. Even if you disagree with them. You have to have that respect. And another hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, and resort to your leaders. Who are your leaders? Your leaders are your scholars. It's always known. He gives that in the other hadith. During these days of affliction, during these days of confusion, during these days of complexity, resort to your leaders. Resort to your imams. Resort to the inheritors and the heirs of the prophets and the messengers. Rather than just us sitting down with few people just because they've got beautiful, nice big beards and they've got a nice abaya and they're very well spoken and we start listening to them. That's not the type of person that you need to resort to. You resort to your imams, you resort to your scholars, you resort to your 
leaders, as the Prophet Muhammad he says. Also, what's important during these days, these days of affliction and these days of fitna, these days of confusion and complexity, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he advises that we must have forbearance. We must have wisdom not to rush into things. That's it. Someone tells me something straight away, Allahu Akbar, takbir, and let's go and do it. Don't rush. Just stop, think, contemplate, consult, ask, verify, inquire before you take and make a decision. Not just someone tells you, okay, kuffar on this and start shooting and start killing. As recently happened in the tea, a young 15 year old boy just went out on a rampage, on a shooting rampage. This person probably didn't even think about what he was doing. And everything he did, it does not even show a sign that this person even thought not even 1% of what he should be doing or not, not should be doing. So think, contemplate, is it right? Is it wrong? Okay, I heard one side, let me hear the other side. Don't rush. You don't have to rush. The Jannah is not going to run to you. And the Jannah is there, it's not going to run away from you either. So don't rush, think about it. Someone told you something, think about it. Contemplate it. Use your brain. What happened to this brain? We'll put it aside. The brain is one of the greatest na'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Well, we've swapped the brain with, with the muscles. That's it. I think if I've got muscles, that's it. I'm hectic. I'm strong. I'm tough. If I've got muscles, that's it. The best and the strongest and the most beneficial muscle that you've got is your brain. Use it. So someone tells you something. Someone whispers in your mind, insinuates in your head. Think about it. You know what? Not always whatever he says is right. That's it. I'll just tag along with it and go ahead with it. No, think. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to Al-Ashaj ibn Abdul Qais, he says, Inna fika khislatayn, yuhibbuhum Allah, al-hilmu wal-anat. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, commended and praised Al-Ashaj Abdul Qais, and he says to him, you have two traits, you have two qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves in you. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him, forbearance and wisdom. Hilm is wisdom. An earth is forbearance. And what's wisdom? That you do the right thing at the right time, in the right situation, in the right circumstance. Just because something is haq, it doesn't mean you just tag along with it and go. The haq has its place and the haq has its time. We have an issue with that because something is haq, the truth that sees, speak the truth, who cares? No, Allah cares and the Prophet cares. The haq has its place and has its time. Just because something is the truth and just because something is the haqq, it doesn't mean you go and speak it wherever you want, however you want, whenever you want. There is a time for it. There's a place for it. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa had the haqq, but he didn't speak it out until three years after his prophecy. Why? Because that wasn't the time for it. That wasn't the place for it. So have wisdom. Think about what you hear. Think about what you're planning to do. And forbearance, anat. You don't have to rush into everything. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived for 63 years of his life before he entered the Jannah. So if you are 15 years old or 20 or 30 years old, you don't have to rush to the Jannah. Inshallah you get the Jannah. You get it inshallah whenever you die, but it doesn't mean just because you are living, you have to end your life to end the Jannah. There's a time for it too. The Jannah is there. And the Jannah is there for those who strive for it. And just to kill yourself, it's not striving for the Jannah. The big jihad is yes to die on the battlefield, but the bigger jihad is to live for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal too. So dying for the sake of Allah is jihad. But living for the sake of Allah is a bigger jihad, as the scholars say. To die on the battlefield, you'll die. You go and fight and you'll die. Someone shoots you, someone chops off your head and you'll die. But to live for the sake of Allah, that's hara. To live 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of your life pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal and encountering all the tribulations and encountering the calamities and the hardships for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's a big jihad too. And there's a proof to that. The proof to that is the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when three men during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Alaihi Salatu Wasallam embraced Islam. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allocated a mental 
to look after those three companions. Then later on, two of the three, they died on the battlefield. So they died in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the third one, he died on his bed. He died in his own home. He died in his own home and his own house. One year after his other two brothers or the other two uh, died on the battlefield. So the companion that was mentoring them and he was looking after him, he saw in his dreams that the one that died on his bed in his home entered the Jannah before the other two. So he came to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, I saw in the dreams that those three brothers, three of them entered the Jannah. But what surprised me is the one that died on his bed in his home entered the Jannah before those two that died on the battlefield. So Nabi Sallallahu told him, why are you surprised for? Why are you surprised for? Didn't the one that died a year after them fast an extra year of Ramadan? Didn't he pray extra prayers? Didn't he give zakat? Didn't he do this for the sake of Allah? Didn't he do that for the sake of Allah? So he had an advantage over those two that died on the battlefield. Because entering the Jannah is not only that you die on the battlefield. As many people think or many people perceive it to be. Yes, dying on the battlefield is one way to Jannah, but there's a lot of other ways that are open for us that we could work and strive for, that we could also enter the Jannah. There's a lot of other gates that we could enter and enter the Jannah through them. I don't have to go and strive and go and sacrifice my life and bring burden to me and my family and to the entire community by me going and dying somewhere. And a lot of who I'm dying with. And a lot of who I'm fighting against. Especially this fitna. That you've got Muslims fighting against Muslims. You take up arms to fight against your other brothers. You take up arms to go and fight against other Muslims. And you say, I'm a mujahid. I want to die for the sake of Allah. What kind of a jihad is that? And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, you, you want to please Allah? You want to enter the Jannah? During this time of confusion, you'd rather stay at home. Stay here. Some people who've got some of our youngsters, they want to go overseas. They want to go to Syria and they want to go to Iraq to go and fight. Fight with who? And fight against who? You have no idea what's going on. You've never carried a gun in your life. You, you, you can't even kill an insect. Who you want to go and fight with what and fight with who? Think. Al-Hilmu wal anat have wisdom. Think about it. Stop, pause for one minute. And I'm sure you come up with a conclusion. But some of these brothers don't even stop for one minute and think about it. Think about it. Think about the consequences. Think about what's going to happen. Think about what's best for you. Think about what's best for your religion. And for that, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in this hadith, where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about wisdom, and he says, wherever you find forbearance and wisdom in a matter, you find that it's balanced. You want to please Allah, have wisdom. Think about it. Okay, maybe you lack some wisdom. Go and ask someone with wisdom. Maybe you lack forbearance. Go and ask someone with forbearance. Maybe you lack knowledge, which is understandable. Go and ask someone with knowledge. That's it, you take it and you run away with it. And someone gave you an advice on who this person is. I don't know, I met him on the internet. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Who is he? Oh, his name is Abu Mujahid X123. Anything more? No, his name is Abu Mujahid. And he's got a nice photo, profile photo of someone with a big beard and carrying a gun. Allahu Akbar, that's hectic. They melt when they see something like that. And Allah knows, no one knows except Allah who's behind that email address or that social media tool or who is behind this username. And that's it, this person, that's it, puts their life in the hands of this person and is willing to destroy the entire community for his sake just to go overseas. And then what happens when they go overseas? They are shocked to see the situation. Then they start crying like babies don't want to come back. Yes, that's what's happening. Yes, yes, that's exactly what's happening. Crying and willing to do anything just to come back. Please bring me back. Please bring me back. Under any account. Under any circumstance. Subhanallah. Why? Here is not working. There is a brain. And some of these guys are very smart. But they put it aside when it comes to this. Think. At least stop for a second. And if you can't think, let someone else think for you at least. Go and ask a sheikh. Go and ask an imam. 
resort to the scholars, resort to the mashayikh, resort to the people of knowledge. Speak to your mom and dad at least. That see your mom and dad, you've asked them. You don't care about them anymore. They've raised you, they took care of you. They brought you up, now you don't even care about your parents anymore. You want to go and die for the sake of Allah and neglect your parents. What kind of a jihad is that either? What kind of a jihad is that? How many times companions will come to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and say to the Prophet وسلم, Oh Messenger of Allah, we want to fight with you. So Nabi Sassam says to them, Are any of your parents alive? So if any of them say one of them or two of them are alive, and Nabi وسلم, will say to them, Go and look after them, that's your jihad. Go and look after them, that's your jihad. Now some of these guys and some of these young men's jihad is to torture their parents. Well, the parents have no idea where they are and they go overseas and tell you, Alhamdulillah, I'm going to die for the sake of Allah. I'm going to die for the sake of Allah. Maybe these people are genuine, maybe they sincere. But the ones who are trying to guide you or the ones who are showing you the path are not as genuine as you are or sincere as you are. And I've been reiterating, I've been emphasizing on this topic because it is a major issue. For that, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, have forbearance have wisdom think about it stop for one second think about it the person that i'm communicating with is he genuine is he the right person am i speaking to a genuine source okay maybe he's giving me an advice let me seek another advice let me look into it when you seek you seek three four different advices from competent doctors and when it comes to your religion you put your entire religion and your destiny in the hands of someone that you have no idea who this person is be smart, be wise, think, think, use that muscle, use that muscle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you. And that's why in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that wherever you find forbearance in a matter, you find that matter is balanced. Don't rush, don't rush. There's no need for you to rush. Take your time. You've heard something. Yes, I understand. You're probably confused. You are passionate. You see all these images of what's happening overseas. I'm upset like you. But stop. Think. Think about it. Say, okay, I want to contribute to Islam and Muslims. What is it that I can contribute to Islam and Muslims? Think about it. Seek other advices. Get to other people. Get to the mashaykh. Get to the sheikh of your local area. We are speaking to people overseas over issues that are taking place here. What connection do these people have with us here? Speak to your local mashayikh, get to your imam, speak to him. Ask him for his guidance. Ask him to show you the way. Seek the advice. And don't rush, there's no need for us to rush. That's it, today, alhamdulillah, I come off the streets and I grab my beard and I start praying and I start listening to some motivational lectures and tomorrow, Allahu Akbar, I want to die for the sake of Allah. Hold on a sec, hold your horses, relax. Relax, the Jannah is there. It's not going to run away. The Jannah is there. And the doors of the Jannah are still open. And there's a huge, big space for everyone. So it's not like well, it's going to get full. It doesn't get full. But just think about it. Use some wisdom. Have some forbearance. Consult. Think about it. Okay, what are the consequences at least? Because one of the biggest challenges that we find, especially in our youth, in general matters, we don't think about the consequences. We do not think about the consequences. I want to do something, and I want to do it then and there, right there and there, and that's it. But I don't think about the consequences later on. Okay, if I do this, what's going to happen later on? If I'm going to do this, what's going to happen later on? We only think about now. If I'm going to do it, that's what's going to happen. But okay, with this, there's a lot of repercussions. There's a lot of consequences. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? A lot of those youngsters went overseas, thought that's it, that's how it's going to be. Now, they'll die to come back. They didn't even think about that. They thought they're going to gather, fight during the day, and eat Meccas and KFC in the evening, and that's it. That's what they probably thought of. Now, they were shocked. They were struck with a big shock. More confusion. More complexity. And now they're saying, okay, how am I going to come back? But did they think about that point then and there? They didn't. Stop. Think. Don't rush. Consult. Seek other advices. Just stop Think, Subhanallah, what's so hard about that? Why is it when it comes to your worldly matters, you think? 
When it comes to your religious matters, subhanallah, you put a pause on your brain. It's a button, pause. After you finish from your religious matters, you get to your worldly matters, mashallah, the brain starts to work. Just have that forbearance as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells us. Also, what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warns of, alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says about these times, these times of affliction, these times where people are so confused, these times that people don't even know what to do anymore. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said the best form is to keep away from the confusing matters. If you are confused about what's happening overseas, just keep away from it. Stick to something that there's no confusion on. There's no confusion in when it comes to your praise. There's no confusion in when it comes to giving da'wah. There's no confusion in when it comes to reading your Quran. There's no confusion in when it comes to seeking knowledge. There's no confusion in when it comes to coming to the masajid. But when it comes to going overseas and being part of this group or being part of that extreme group, there is that confusion. There is that confusion. What's the best solution to that? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, keep away from it. Stick to something that there's no confusion in. Stick to that and you are safe. But where there are matters where there's confusion in, even though to me there's no confusion, to me it's black and white. But if you are confused, keep away from something that you are confused from and stick to something that you're not confused in. If there is a confusion in a particular matter, keep away from it and get to something that's clear. Salah, alhamdulillah, there's no disagreement over that. Giving da'wah, there's no disagreement over that. Seeking knowledge, there's no disagreement over that. Calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no disagreement over that. And there's no disagreement that inshallah you enter the jannah. Don't put yourself in a situation which is confusing. You don't know, could it be this way, could it be that way? Are these people on the haq, are these people on the bottom? Is it true what people say about it? Is it not true what people say about it? Why is it this? Okay, keep away from that and stick to something that you're not confused in. Why you want to risk it for? Why are you putting your entire religion and faith and destiny in a risk? Just assess the situation. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, stick to your house. If there's a confusion, just keep away from it. And he advised many of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, during a time or a period of time where there is a confusion, keep away from it. There's a fitna, keep away from it. And now we do live that, yes. As I mentioned to me, it's clear cut. But maybe someone who's new in the deen, someone who's young, is confused. Are these people on the right? Are these people on the wrong? Are these people fighting for Allah? Are these people not fighting for the sake of Allah? Azza wa Jal? To me, it's not, there's no confusion, it's clear cut. Because I can't see a Muslim taking up arms and fighting another Muslim. Or a Muslim just killing innocent people just because they are kuffar. And Nabi didn't even do that. So to me, there's no confusion. Maybe to you there is. Okay, but at the end of the day, you are confused. If you are, just keep away from something that you're confused in. Stick to something that you're not confused in. Leave a matter that's doubtful to a matter that's not doubtful. Leave what's doubtful for something that's not doubtful. So what's not doubtful now is Alhamdulillah, I could be a good Muslim. Especially in this country. I could give my da'wah. I could show people the true color of Islam. I could bring people to Islam. I could bring my closest of my Muslim friends closer to Islam. Muslims themselves need da'wah before anyone else. I could bring them to Islam. I teach them the religion. I could worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do something. Do something that at the end, I am 100% sure, alhamdulillah, I've done something 100% for the sake of Allah. And there's no confusion in that. Rather than me putting myself in a position or putting myself... In a state that I don't even know what it is. If it's 100%, yes, no, this and that. That's, like, that's exactly what the Prophet ﷺ was talking about. That's the exact confusion the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, keep away from. That's exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said during those times of affliction where people betray the trust and you don't even know who's who and what's what. And Nabi ﷺ said, stick to what you know of and resort to your leaders. What about something that you don't know of or you are confused in? And Nabi ﷺ said, keep away from it. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that. And finally, my brothers and my sisters, dua. Dua. Supplicate to Allah. Ask Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open your heart to what's best. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to what pleases you. Raise your hands. Before you want to take any drastic steps and serious steps, Ya Rab, show me the right path. And if you are sincere and genuine about it, I assure you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the right path. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the right path. But you have to be sincere about it. You have to be genuine. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Raise your hands to Allah. Say, Ya Rabb, I'm confused. Ya Allah, I don't know what to do. Show me what to do. Ya Allah, guide me to your pleasure. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make this dua. Who were you not to make that dua and think, Wallahi, you know it all. Yeah, you know it all. You understand it all. Why? Because you scream and you shout and you want to declare what on the entire world. That's it, you know it all. That's the mentality some people have. Because they are loud and they scream and they shout and they think they could take on anyone, they think they're on the haq. So the muscle where is in the arm, not in the brain. That's why their ending, their ending destiny is not always the most prosperous and the best of destinies. So ask Allah, Ya Rabb, show me the right path. Ya Allah, guide me. I am confused. Ya Allah, make me someone who knows what's right. Ya Allah, guide me to what pleases you. Ya Allah, show me. Ya Allah, open my heart to what's right. And wallahi, 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 if you are genuine about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the right path. If you are genuine about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your heart. If you are genuine about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make everything easy for you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran al-Kareem, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever depends on Allah and relies on Allah, it's enough for him. That's it. Allah will show you the right path. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah sincerely and genuinely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make an easy path for you. Depend on Allah. Did we really depend on Allah? Or depend on someone who's sending us some emails or corresponding with us on Facebook or Twitter? Do I really depend on Allah Azza wa Jal? Or am I depending on someone that I've got no idea who he is and what he is? Depend on Allah. Depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see what Allah Azza wa Jal will do for you. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the path. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal, Ya Allah, I'm confused, show me the path. And Wallah, Allah will show you the path. But if you are sincere about it, if you are genuine, but if you are about it, you know, just to look hectic, or for you to fit in with the rest of the crowd, or because you want to tag along with your mates and your friends and your peers, then that's something else. Ya Allah, I'm sincere. Ya Allah, I'm genuine. Show me the path. Show me the, the path of your pleasure. Show me the path that pleases you. Ya Allah, keep away from me. Ya Allah, keep away from me. Any path that displeases you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jalla will show him the path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make an opening for them. Allah will open a door that was closed and shut in your face. Allah will open it for you. But depend on Allah sincerely. Not half-heartedly, half with Allah and half with your friends. Not sincerely and see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you in return. My brothers and my sisters, I've been emphasizing on this topic because it's a major issue. And wallahi, I am very upset to see many of our young brothers who are sincere and genuine, but misguided in one way or another, they take the wrong path. And they destroy their future. And not only them, not only they destroy their future, but also they bring a lot of hardship and a lot of difficulties upon their families and the entire community. What for? What did you benefit? What did you gain? What did you gain out of that? I went on a shooting rampage. What did I do? What did I gain? What did I add to Islam? What did I bring to Muslims? Only harm over harm over harm. Nothing else. Is that what Islam is about? That you bring harm to Islam? You do an action you bring harm to Islam. Think. Contemplate. Use that beautiful gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had gifted you and think about it. So I ask Allah Azza wa to protect us and protect our kids. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the Muslim youth. I ask Allah Azza wa to protect them from any deviance. And I ask Allah Azza wa to protect them from any misguidance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who listen and hear and act upon what they listen and hear. Subhanak Allah, muhammadik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa nashadu.